Hello everybody and welcome to the second video lesson for chapter 8 of the Foundations of Scalable Systems. In this lesson I'm going to delve into some of the details associated with utilizing the Google App Engine serverless platform. Google App Engine, also known as GAE, was the first offering from Google as part of what is now known as the Google Cloud Platform. It's been in general release since 2011 and enables developers to upload and execute HTTP-based application services on Google's managed cloud infrastructure. GAE supports developing applications in Go, Java, Python, Node.js, PHP, .NET and Ruby. At least, probably changed since uh, since this was made. To build an application on GAE, developers can utilize common HTTP-based application frameworks that are built with GAE runtime libraries provided by Google. For example, in Python, applications can utilize Flask, Django, Web2Py, and in Java, the primary supported platform is servlets built on the Jetty JEE web container. Applications generally access a managed persistent store, such as Google's Firestore or the Cloud SQL, or they interact with a messaging service like Google's PubSub. Application execution is basically managed dynamically by GAE, which launches compute node resources to match the request demand that your application is seeing. We'll delve into that next. Google App Engine actually comes in two different flavors, known as the standard environment and the flexible environment. The basic difference is that the standard environment is more closely managed by GAE, with development restrictions in terms of languages, versions, and frameworks that are supported. This tight management makes it possible to scale services rapidly in response to increased loads. In contrast, the flexible environment is essentially a tailored version of Google's Compute Engine, which runs in Docker containers on VMs. As its name suggests, it gives more options in terms of development capabilities that can be used, but it's not as suitable for rapid scaling. So given that Foundations of Scalable Systems is about scalability, I'm just going to focus on the standard environment in this video lesson and in the chapter. In the standard environment, when a request arrives and there are no resident instances of your application, i.e. your code has not been loaded, GAE dynamically loads an application instance and invokes the processing for the endpoint that's called by the client. Multiple simultaneous requests can be sent to the same instance up to some configured limit. More on this when I discuss order scaling a little bit more in, in uh, this, this video lesson. GAE will then load additional instances on demand until the specified maximum instance value is reached. By setting a maximum value, an application can put a lid on costs, albeit with the potential for increased latencies if the load continues to grow and the maximum amount of, of um, instances has been reached. The language used also affects the time to load a new instance on GAE. For example, a lightweight runtime environment such as Go will start on a new instance in less than a second. In comparison, a more bulky JVM is of the order of one to three seconds on average. This load time is also influenced by the number of external libraries that the application links to and incorporates. Autoscaling is an option that you specify in an app.yaml file that is passed to GAE when you upload your server code. The app.yaml is basically there to contain a bunch of configuration parameters. An autoscaled application is managed by GAE according to a collection of default parameter values that you can override in your app.yaml. JE basically manages the number of deployed processing instances for an application based on incoming traffic load. When a request arrives, JE chooses a deployed instance to process the request, as you can see on the slide here. As the request load grows, the JE scheduler will dynamically load more instances to handle requests. And there are three parameters that you can specify values for that affect how this scaling occurs. Let's look at those. Three key parameters affect how the GAE scheduler deploys new instances based on load, and they're listed on the slide here. Let's look at them in turn. The target CPU utilization 
This basically sets the CPU's utilization threshold for an instance. Above this threshold, new instances will be started to handle traffic. The range is 0.5, i.e. 50% to 95%, and the default is 60%, 0.6. You can also specify the maximum concurrent requests that can be sent to an instance. This sets the maximum number of concurrent requests an instance can accept before the scheduler spawns a new instance. The default value is 10, and the maximum is 80. The documentation doesn't state the minimum allowed value, but presumably one would define a single threaded surface. There's also the target throughput utilization, and this is related to the value specified for the maximum current requests. Basically, it's used in conjunction with the maximum concurrent requests to specify when a new instance is started. The range is 0.5, 50% to 95%, and the default 0.6, 60%. It works like this. When the number of concurrent requests, i.e. the number of concurrent requests that an instance is handling, reaches a value that is equal to the maximum concurrent request value multiplied by the target throughput utilization, the scheduler tries to start a new instance. So this means in def by default, the scheduler will start a new instance when the instance has six concurrent requests running, i.e. 60% of 10. Yep, this interplay between these parameters does make configuring Google App Engine applications a tad confusing. But you know, it's distributed systems, let's expect a little bit more complexity too. You can also specify values to control when the GAE scheduler adds new instances based on the time a request spends in the request pending queue. As you can see on the slide here, client applications send requests and they're queued in this request pending queue until they're allocated to application instances. So basically, the max pending latency parameter specifies the maximum amount of time that GAE should allow a request to wait in the pending queue before starting an additional instance to handle requests and reduce latency. The default value for this parameter is 30 milliseconds. The lower the value, the quicker an application will scale, and probably the more it will cost you. So yep, it's a balancing act. These auto-scaling parameter settings give us the ability to fine-tune a service's behavior to balance performance and cost. How modifying these parameters will affect an application's behavior is, of course, totally dependent on the precise functionality of the service. The fact that there are subtle interplays between these parameters makes this tuning exercise somewhat complicated. I'll return to this topic in the final lesson uh, for this chapter in a case study uh, which explains a simple platform agnostic approach that you can take to service tuning. So there's a brief overview of Google App Engine. And in the next video lesson, as a contrast, I'm going to delve into the details of the AWS Lambda serverless platform. Thanks for watching.